and welcome to a, another video with Look Who's Mixing. So today we're going to make some vegetable stock paste. Now if you haven't seen it before it means you don't own a Thermomix. When you buy a Thermomix and we organise a delivery with your consultant, um, vegetable stock paste is the most common thing that we make. It is fantastic, there's no preservatives, you will see all of the fresh fruit and veggies, much of which I've started to grow myself. Um, and it is a staple in a majority of the food that I cook for in my main meals. And it's very good to sneak in some of those veggies for hidden veggies for the kids. So let's get started. So to begin with, I want 200 grams of celery stalks trimmed and cut into pieces. Now, usually the leaves, everything would go into the bin. Now I throw all of mine, the tops of my celery, into my vegetable stock paste because I'm going to eat the other parts instead. So why not throw all of this goodness into my stock? We're going to go next. Two carrots cut into pieces. Now if you're ever unsure when a recipe asks for cutting to pieces, a really good thing to go by is the size of your selector on your machine. That's your dial. If it's bigger than your dial, then it's probably too big a piece. So I'm going to pop in two pieces of carrot, or two carrots cut into pieces. One brown onion cut into halves. This is definitely what sold me. I hate cutting onion. I fry every time. If I only have to cut it in half, then I'm happy. One fresh tomato. Now I have to say this is the first time I have ever successfully grown a tomato and these tomatoes are from my own garden. Now I know that it says one, however, because they're my homegrown, they're slightly small, so I'm just going to pop in my two small ones. One zucchini cut into pieces. Again, I used my dial um, to be able to know the sizes. Pop those through. Make sure they're filling all the gaps. And two garlic cloves. Now I've got one big monster garlic, so I'm just going to pop him in. A dried bay leaf. Here we go. One to two sprigs of fresh basil. Unfortunately, I don't have basil, but that's okay because this is my own stock um, and I'm just gonna skip that ingredient. One to two sprigs of sage. Sage I do have, and this has come out of my garden and look how big my leaf is. So let's pop that one in. One to two sprigs of rosemary. Again, this one's out of my garden. I have my rosemary around my mailbox and I have not had any problems with spiders or snails since. Throw in that, you can never have too much rosemary. And eight sprigs of flat leaf parsley. Here we go, fresh out of my garden. We'll pop that on through, we'll go next. I'm gonna insert my measuring cup into my lid, mine stays in there. And we're gonna sit that on top, we're gonna to go next. And 10 seconds on speed six. Plays our little music. You'll notice I've changed the ringtone of mine. I call it ringtone because it reminds me of the Nokia. Um, and I've got the guitars going. So if you can see there, all my leaves on top aren't chopped up. But that's why the recipe is in the order that it is. They're going to cook down. But you can see all of that goodness has been mulched. So we're now down nice and low and I'm no longer up near the top of my bowl. So we're going to go next and 150 grams of rock salt. This may seem like a lot of salt. However, there's no preservative in this. So the salt's going to be your preservative. If you want to cut down on the salt content, you will cut down on the lifetime of the stock. Um, and you can freeze it if that's the case, because with the current salt content, it won't freeze. So it's nice and easy to throw in. You put that much salt in with your seasoning, uh, we're only going to use a tablespoon. And when I say tablespoon, I mean we use a tablespoon in our cooking. So really, it's not a lot of salt. However, my salt bag looks big. I just had to duck off and go and get that. So 150 grams of rock salt. I've just got cooking salt. Again, I just use what I've got. There we go. Go next. One tablespoon of olive oil. Now, a great thing about this, and with our inbuilt scales, you don't need to measure out that tablespoon. Tablespoon of olive oil is 20 grams. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna pull up my scales in the middle of my recipe. 
and I'm going to pour in 20 grams of olive oil. Now, if you don't have a massive olive oil uh, container like this one, then you haven't been cooking with the Thermomix long enough. Before I got my Thermomix, never would have gone through this much oil. But I cook so much now, it's fantastic. So then we're going to go next, we're going to insert our measuring cup into our mixing bowl lid, just like that. And next, it's going to be 20 minutes on 120 degrees, and I'm just going to go to speed one. So that's going to cook everything down, and then I'm going to come back and show you how we're going to puree that stock into a nicer puree. <laughs> See ya. And our 20 minutes is nearly up. There we go. All right, let's see what it wants us to do next. So I'm gonna go next. Keep measuring cup in. Turn speed selected to speed five and then gradually turn up to speed nine. So this is where we are pureeing hot liquid. My red lights are on on my machine so I know this is over 60 degrees. I also know I just cooked at 120. So when it's over 60 degrees, it won't let you go above speed six straight away. So we're going to go to five and every time 10 seconds counts down on that clock, um, then I'm going to go up a speed. All right, so let's give this a go. What I might do is put this in a little bit of a hyperlapse. All right, so let's see how that went. Open up my lid again. I'm going to push down on the front, let all of that steam go so I can imagine what my camera underneath is doing right now. Flip your lid upside down, scoop off all of that goodness. And that's my vegetable stock paste. And there we go. Now, I'll show you a little trick with the lid. Hold on a minute. So to begin with, on the back of our jug, on that lip side, there's actually measurements down the side that will give you your max 2.2, your 2, your 1.5, your 1, and your 500 mils. So if you ever need to know what size container you need to get for your curries, for your leftovers, or for your soup, all I do is run my spatula along until I meet the top of my liquid, and I'm gonna need just under a liter here. I'm sure once I scrape it all in, I'm pretty sure the vegetable stock makes a whole liter. Not sure what my son's doing. Okay, so one little trick. Since our lid is already dirty, why don't we use it to help fill up our jar? So I've got my little jar here. This one is only a 300 ml jar, and that's because my mum um, gets half my vegetable stock every time I make it. So all we do is use our lid as a funnel, and we can pour straight in, and we're not creating any more dishes and that lid already has a natural fall and it's already dirty so there we go the rest I will pop into a jar for myself but let that cool and there's your vegetable stock goodness as I said most recipes ask for a tablespoon to two tablespoons you can pop that in the fridge or the freezer it won't freeze because of that salt content or well, there's some really smart people out there that have learned how to dehydrate it so that you've got stock powder as well. So that's it. That's a staple that you are going to want to make and it's a fantastic one. You can also make it um, FODMAP friendly by <coughs> omitting the garlic. Oh, little man's a bit sick. By omitting the garlic Mommy. and the onion. Do you want to say hello? Oh, baby. He wants baby bus. He's done pretty well. He's been uh, sitting in the lounge room this whole time. So from us, Ryan, do you want to say bye? You take your dummy out? Bye. Say bye. Bye. <laughs>